In this next set of clips, we're going to be working on the core competencies in Chapter 9, the therapeutic stance. Uh, here we're going to be working on the relationship with the client and the therapist and the quality that the therapist brings to that relationship. This is a genuine, compassionate, and vulnerable quality that allows the uh, therapist to connect with the client on an equal basis. In this next section, we're going to be uh, exploring core competency number two, therapist self-disclosure in session. Uh, these disclosures should be appropriate and thoughtful, well-timed. Uh, the client in this particular section has been struggling with feeling incompetent and a failure in her schoolwork. Uh, it is a barrier for her in terms of progressing uh, in relationships uh, at school and uh, just in general. Well, I'm already taking way less classes than everybody else and I signed up for five and now um, I've dropped all except two and I just can't seem to get myself to be motivated on the weekends or at night to study because I feel like it takes so much out of me to just go to class that I just can't move forward and then I end up getting you know C's or D's or F's on the tests mm -hmm. and they post those grades and and this list that everyone can see your grade and I always have one of the lowest scores. So you've talked about this in some of your past sessions and you've linked it up to feelings of failure. Yeah. Sometimes feeling incompetent. Yeah. I do feel that way and I feel like when we have partners that I can't bring anything to the groups. Um, I just, yeah, I feel like I shouldn't even be at school sometimes. Yeah, this kind of sense of withdrawal and pulling away. Yeah. And You've mentioned that um, this is a lonely place for you. Yeah, I feel very alone. None of my friends, I guess you could call them, the, no one has this problem but me, and I... I go to the college counselor and it just seems no one understands that I just feel like every time I try to seek help no one gets where I'm coming from and it's just oh she's lazy or whatnot but I really want to succeed I just I don't I so this it seems like you're completely alone in this yeah well, one of the things that happens for me sometimes is that I too feel like I'm failing or incompetent in some of the things that I do. You? Yeah, I struggle also and sometimes I don't even know exactly what to do in here and I'm thinking about failure or incompetence. Really? So, yeah, so that's present for me also. And I wonder, because we know that this has been a part of keeping you out of some relationships, yeah. if it might even be a way that it would interfere with our relationship. Huh. Like maybe feeling like you're failing and not doing this right even, if it doesn't go yeah. a particular way. No, I feel that way. Yeah. And so I wonder if you and I could kind of recognize our very human experiences, feelings of failure, incompetence, and then work on the problem together as we move forward. Yeah. So in this session, it was an act consistent self-disclosure. The client had been feeling alone and uh, like she was unique in her failure for quite some time. Uh, I, at this time, I uh, joined with her and let her know that she was not alone by disclosing that I too sometimes have those experiences. Um, <clears throat> And then uh, as she began to open up and say, really, it, in that space, she could connect to that she wasn't alone. Uh, finally, uh, it, makes a, it opens the room up for the two of us to work together on any way that this particular experience of failure or incompetence might show up in the room. We'll be aware of it so we can ask in the future, is this a problem right now?
in this next section, we're going to be focusing on core competency number five. Uh, here, the therapist models acceptance of challenging content while also being willing to hold uh, content that is contradictory without any intention to resolve that content. Um, well, I didn't get to grow up in the same house as my dad, so he's always been really present, but I feel like he's tried to raise me from a distance, and everything, I know he's coming from a place of love, and I love him too, and I, I, I want to have that good relationship with him, but everything that he tries to tell me I just feel like I'm not good enough and it's really judgmental and it's really hurtful and then it it makes me act hostile around him because I feel like he, he doesn't love me mm -hmm. and he doesn't you know he can't see my he can't celebrate me so it sounds like there's a couple of things happening and one is that you love him and want some closeness but yeah at the same time, he's giving you messages that you're not good enough. Yeah. Let's spend some time thinking about how you could improve the communication with your father so that maybe you could let him know uh, what's on your mind when you're having these experiences. Can you give me an example well, of a conversation that you have? Yeah. Um... I told him I was really interested in doing this program abroad in Italy and it's something that I, I'm really looking forward to. I want to be a chef and it's a culinary school there and you know he just automatically goes back to well you need to you know, stay here, you need to go to school, you need to do something. He wants me to be a nurse like his mother. and. I know he's coming from a safety, he wants the best for me, but he can't celebrate the adventures that I want to. So maybe one of the things that you could do is have him ref reflectively listen to you. So ask him in your conversation if perhaps he could hear you more openly and repeat back some of the things that you're saying. So it sounds like he's kind of just missing it. Yeah. Is that something that you could try in your next conversation with him? I don't know if he would be able to do it, but I, I mean, I could ask him, but he just, even coming here with you, he thinks is a waste of money. Yeah, so maybe then you can speak with him about how you're benefiting from it, and again, yeah. ask him to hear it. Yeah. Yeah, I could try that. So in this last clip, uh, there was a very subtle thing happening. Uh, we did move into problem solving, which in and of, an, of itself isn't necessarily a problem. In fact, problem solving could be quite consistent with something that you're doing in ACT. In this particular case, though, the client was exp expressing a fairly emotional piece of content. Uh, she was talking about her father, uh, criticizing her, and at one point she even seemed to be on the verge of tears. I missed an opportunity there to connect with the client in a powerful way by uh, taking an in-the-moment time for our relationship to develop, uh, by recognizing uh, that emotion that's there, being willing to tolerate the emotion that's there. Another issue that might be at hand it, when a client begins to get emotional is that sometimes it's hard for the therapist too. Let's say, for instance, I had a critical father and it was hard for me to experience that criticalness. I might quickly then move into problem solving as a way to escape my own emotional experience and lose the willingness in the moment. So uh, the best approach in this one would have been to stay with the issue at hand, the emotion at hand, longer uh, and be willing to experience what the therapist is experiencing too. Additionally, this is related to uh, core competency number nine. Uh, 
where we were talking about the processes that occur in the moment. Uh, in this session, I missed those pro processes that are relevant and act consistent. In this next clip, we'll be looking at core competency one. Uh, here, we'll be uh, working with the client from a perspective that they are completely able at this point in time, they have all that they need to move forward in their life in a valued way. Well, um, I just have a really hard time getting motivated. I, I, um, I don't have a job again because I just can't get there on time. I have a hard time leaving the house in the morning because I just don't see the point. I just feel like every time I try at anything, I fail, and I'm just a broken human. You've mentioned broken human before, and the place that I'm coming from is that you are 100% whole, 100% capable and able, not in, and able to respond to what it is that you'd like to do in your life. So I'm not going to operate from the position that you're broken. I'm going to hold you as uh, a response-able person who can get out there and bring her values to life. This last piece was a very short section. Uh, the client is holding herself to be broken, having that particular thought. Uh, from the ACT uh, perspective, the therapist always wants to hold the client as 100% capable and able in the moment. So this was a consistent ACT move. 